Welcome. Thank you all very much for coming tonight. I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled to have the honor of interviewing Dr. Angelo. Um, if I really spent time to really detail all of her accomplishments, not only as a writer, but as a performer and essayist and producer and actress, uh, that would intake the entire hour and a half, and we wouldn't even get a chance to, to hear her speak. So, of course, that's really why we'll, we're all here. So I'll start with that immediately. And um, I, I actually wasn't thinking about the Maurice Sendak story, but it's his 80th birthday, and you very recently celebrated your 80th yeah. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, I'm still celebrating. It. Oh, <laughs> we've a year long. Yes, you got right. till eighty-one. So. That's right. So, but you had a special uh, surprise celebration this year, right? That uh, Oprah Winfrey, your friend, oh. organized for you. Yes, she's yes. It was an amazing um, experience. She's celebrated my sixtieth, my sixty-fifth, my seventieth, my seventy-fifth, and now my eightieth. And I was so pleased, among other things. Um, Natalie Cole sang, mm -hmm. and um, Tony Bennett. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, and Miss Jessie Norman. Oh, what an amazing oh, lineup. Uh, George Faison danced. <laughs> it was wonderful. And mainly I saw daughters I had, I had made over the years. I take people's children. <laughs> I just do. It is true. I, I only had, I had one child. I gave birth to one, a son. But I have daughters who are black and white and Asian and Spanish-speaking and Native American. I have daughters who are fat and thin, <laughs> and pretty and plain, and some gay and straight and I have all sorts of daughters. I have daughters who I just claim. Uh -huh. And they, uh, they claim me. Well, in fact, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. And this is, of course, the new book that's just out in book, uh, bookstores, Letter to My Daughter. And as you said, you have a son. What is it? Are there things that a mother can only tell a daughter as opposed yes. to a son? Are there yes. things that only a daughter can hear from a mother? Well, I think Why so. to a daughter as opposed to a child, say? Well, I think with my son, I hope I raised a, a person, a man, who knows how to treat a woman. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a single parent most of the time. And um, he saw me as strong and also weak and um, opinionated and ready to be convinced. I loved him. I was never in love with him. It's very important for a parent because people who are in love with their children also decide that, whether intentionally or, or consciously or not, they decide that they can be described by their children. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. I, I love him. He has his own life. I have my own. And I knew that, I don't know how, but I knew that early on. And I let him see that I respect the male point of view so when, when he was about eight, I said, uh, we have, I'd like you to think about this. We have $46, and uh, we have rent and telephone and this to pay and food. Would you like to think of, about what, how, how, how do you think we should spend it? He didn't know I left him no chance. You know, there was no out. <laughs> Uh, but he would say, hmm, I'll go to my room and think. <laughs> and he would come back and say, Mom, I think we ought to pay the rent and get some food. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, so uh, he, was, he felt that 
being male was important, but no more important than being female. And that's the way I raised him. And uh, they say he's a good husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I actually want to get back to your son, because there's an essay in here. There, there's a lot of very beautiful essays in here, and, and one about him. But before I get to that, I want to go back to the title again, Your Daughter. Yes. So what, what is it that, that the special thing that mothers can tell daughters? Um, there's, we, we share um, our periods. <laughs> and um, a man can't understand that. Mm -hmm. I could not explain that to myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But something happens with a woman and her daughter. If she's able to say, not you've got the curse, that is the most stupid thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> but look, look, you have stepped into this new world. Mm -hmm. You have the possibility not only of being a woman, but becoming a mother. And this is an indication that you have, this door is opening for you. Uh, in a marvelous way, a woman liberates a woman, a girl into womanhood. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably the great gift of a mother to a daughter. Mm -hmm. You liberate by, by saying, aren't you marvelous? Mm -hmm. You know, I said today, I hadn't thought about this before. My mother, I'm sorry to say, has been dead 15 years or more. But never, she never reduced me. She never embarrassed me in front of other people she didn't denigrate me. When I was pregnant, I was 16, pregnant, unmarried, and I told my stepfather that I was pregnant since she was off on one of her business uh, transactions. I said that I was pregnant, and he asked me, how far along are you? I said, I have about three weeks. He thought I meant I was three weeks pregnant. <laughs> so he telephoned my mother. He said, she'll be here today. She came. She walked in, and she looked at me and said, you're more than any three weeks pregnant. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. I have three weeks before the baby is due. <laughs> she asked, uh, who is the boy? You know? I said, yes. Do you love him? I said, no. Does he love you? I said, no. She said, then we'll not ruin three people's lives. We're going to have a wonderful child. Mm -hmm. And not once in my whole life did she diminish me. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. And this is what I think a mother can do to a daughter. Well, you had an extraordinary relationship with your grandmother yes. as well, so That's you were true. blessed twice in that So sense. many times, yes. Uh -huh. my, my father's mother, who raised me, mm -hmm. because my mother really was not the person to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I think among other differences, there's the parent, who's a great parent of small children, they, they put little bows on their hair and little, little, little cutie. <laughs> <laughs> but when the child reaches about 12 or 13 and has opinions, the parents say, sit down, shut up, go over there. <laughs> my mother would have been, my mother really had no idea of what to do with a small person. <laughs> but when I was able to talk, when I went back to her at 13, she loved me. She was uh -huh. great uh -huh. as, a, as a, a parent of a young adult. But my grandmother, my father's mother, was all of that. She spoke softly. She was over six foot. She just 
was an incredible woman, and she almost whispered, except in church when she'd open up that voice and make the windows <laughs> shake. And people would jump up sometimes, and women would take their whole purses and wind them up <laughs> and throw them at the preacher. 